you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At the time when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that, I, that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others said Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and that gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound on heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Check one. My dear friends, this altar is quite familiar to me. When I began my priestly ministry, my first, first calling is here. And I always love the church. I love this altar where I used to experience the Lord in a very strong way. And today it's a very special day. So we are in the 21st Sunday in ordinary time, and we are in a continuous journey. As Catholics, we have a general gradation. We have a connection from every Sunday to the other. That's the beauty of our church. Because we have, we, we have to build our life on the Word. We follow it very carefully. We don't have to have book cricket, you know. Sometimes we take the Bible and try to get answers and say, see three Hail Marys and open if the book is of the readings from the Ezekiel, I mean, you're doomed. <laughs> you know, no, no, not that one. And again, this thing. Of course, you can, you can get answers from the Bible. But then we have, a, we have a very clear journey with the Word. And now if you can remember a few weeks earlier, uh, Jesus, after multiplying bread for 5,000 people, in that peak, he wanted to be alone. He wanted to be alone to discern the will of the Father, accord according to the Gospel of John. People persuaded him to become the king. So that, because he had that pressure from the people, it's always important to discern the will of the Father properly, clearly. That's exactly why he went away from everyone. He sent the disciples away in the boat and he asked all the people, that a multitude of people to go away and he went to a lonely place, a solitude, a solitary ground. Exactly what we, what we found in uh, Prophet Elijah. In, in Prophet Elijah, if you can remember, Queen Jezebel was trying to kill him after that peak experience where he killed about approximately about 450 Baal worshippers. And after that, the queen was, wanted to kill the, kill the prophet. So he, he was going away. He was so cut up. He was so stranded. He was so low, down and broken. God spoke to him, not in a fire, not in an earthquake, not in a storm, rather in a gentle breeze. He had to listen in the cave on the Mount of Horeb. So that is important, my dear friends. 
So in that listening only, we are in this journey. And today we find, even last Sunday, last Sunday, we find how that Canaanite woman was there. If you, if you, if you follow the mass carefully, the reading carefully. And that land was a pagan land. So that's, that's exactly why Jesus said, the food for the children is not for dogs. Where the understanding of the Jews that people, the chosen people are children. Others are like dogs in a way. So Jesus had to break that taboo and he had to be the bridge for the good news to go to the kingdom. And now today, again, he's in a land of Caesarea Philippi. It's a pagan land. My dear friends, the very reason the Lord is choosing, choosing, the Lord is choosing this, these pagan lands is at least known by the people. Seldom people knew about him. So he had in more time for the disciples to deep, for, the, for a deep teaching where he wanted to teach him that I have to be crucified. Messiah is not a person who is glorified in the way the people glorified himself in the way Jews wanted him to be the Messiah by eradicating the kingdom of Rome, Roman kingdom. So that's exactly why he wanted to teach them in this land. And this particular land is important, my dear friends. Caesarea Philippi. Of course, I'm not going to give you a, a geographical interpretation about it. Rather, you have a vague idea. They have a very a huge palace for the, uh, for the Roman Empire, built by Herod's son, Philip. And also they had another, another Greek god there. So it's a politically and religiously mingled place. Even Jews were there. There the Lord is asking, whom do the people say that I am? My dear friends, not that Jesus want to find his identity because of, well, about, through people's opinion, no. Of course, psychologically, psychologically, if you, if you want to know yourself, one third of you is known by others. So imagine, put a come, come, turn the other side, Ayo, oh, there's something stick here. There's something. Me mitha na mode akela liya da. Ayo, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Only someone should. No, no. In those days, can you can you remember? We used to get a get a piece of paper, sticky paper, and tuck. <laughs> More there, <laughs> whatever it is, we know nobody knows. We'll walk like anything, and uh, others will bully us. We don't know because he can't see that. That's exactly why. That's exactly why psychologically, one third of us, if you want to know yourself definitely, others, what others think about you, but others' opinion, you have to get the opinion of the other people. But then one third, you should only you should know. The rest of it. It's a mystery God should reveal in your life. That's by the way. But Jesus does not want his identity to be revealed by the people. No. Because people had their own whims and own ideas where he said, you are, you are, you are, you are exercising the devil with the power of Belzebul. <laughs> Come on, that's not right. And they thought that he's come, coming from Nazareth. What good can come from Nasser, his son of a uh, carpenter and Maria's son? No, that's not the reality. Then there's, he said, people said he's a glutton. You know, he comes with eating and drinking. That's what people thought about himself. No. Of course, when he began the ministry, he was submerged in the waters of J Jordan. And he, when he came up, the Spirit of the Lord spoke and said, You are my beloved son. And I'm well pleased of you. So he exactly knew who he was. So this question is not opa-dupa. This question is not to know about himself from the people. You know, we have a disorder. We are so important. It's so important for us what people think about me. What I am is what others think about me. So I try to maintain an image. No, no way. 
If you want to know yourself, you have to climb the Mount Horeb. If you want to know yourself, you have to be in that solitary ground. If you want to know yourself, you have to listen to the voice of the Father. If you want to know yourself, you have to discern, your, the, discern the will of the Father. If you want to know yourself, you have to go to the mirror of the Word of God, which, so show, which clearly shows you who you are. Jesus exactly knew who he was. And now he's there to teach them a lesson. People say that you are prophet Elijah. People say that you are prophet Jeremiah. People say that you are John the Baptist. And of course, none of them was right. None was right. What people think about you can be very deceptive, my dear friends. Can be really, really deceptive. That's exactly why you need to have that solitary ground to know your identity, what God wants from you, not the popular opinion that can be cheap popularity. That's exactly why you have to climb that mountain. My dear friends, it's the day where our first Pope was appointed. And the Lord is preparing the infrastructure. The Lord is preparing the ground for that first Pope to be appointed. Because it's important, if you, if you find the first reading, if you find the first reading where, where Shebna was punished, Shebna was prime minister of that king. Of course, he had the key in, in Jerusalem, my dear friends. Of course, the background, the Septuagint of the reading, uh, the, the southern, the northern kingdom was captured by Assyrians and they were trying to, trying to attack the southern kingdom where the temple was there, Judah and Jerusalem was there. So the kings were afraid of the Assyrians, the most powerful, powerful army that time. That's, they was, because they were scared, the king had a plan to get the support of, of Egyptians. But the Lord said, you don't want any other reinforcement. I'm going to be there with you. You obey the commandments. I'll, be, I'll be protect you. But that fear was so strong, they could not believe in the Lord. That's exactly why Shebna was punished. His, his, his appointment was taken away. His anointing was taken away because he built a tomb for himself. He built a place for himself. That pride, inflated mind completely took him away from the will of the Father. Pride is the great vice of all the vices. Pride goes before all the fall. You know, that's exactly. Shebna was uh, taken away and Eliakim was appointed. The Lord is saying, I will, mind the words, I will appoint Eliakim. I will give the keys. I will fix him like a peck. It's all I, my dear friends. Not me. Not me. It's all I. He should increase. And I should decrease in the appointment. If you, if you carefully, carefully probe into the readings, we find that Shebna was in Peter. That pride was in Peter. Of course, if you read, if you happen to read the book, The Big Fisherman, you know, he's not a small person. He's a big shot. You know, he's capable. And he, was, he had recognition. And he was, he was proud about himself. He said, Lord, John, of course, the young guy can contrast. Thomas, <laughs> filled with doubt. <laughs> Judas, he is a rogue. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to leave you alone. Peter, <laughs> Peter, I'm a Peter, right there, by the way. You know, Peter, Peter had that pride within himself. You know, even he happened to take the sword and cut the ear of the uh, soldier. Can you remember? Can you remember? Huh? So when Jesus fixed the ear, it's not in the Bible. When he fixed the ear, he said, Happy New Year. And he said, wish you the same. <laughs> That's not in the Bible. Anyway, so Peter, Peter was, you know, he, ha he was proud that Shemna was in Peter. 
so he had to humble himself i'm jump, jumping to the next sunday gospel also i'm provoked to go there also jesus is saying satan get behind me satan get behind me and one 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 particular this particular wife he, she was so tempted with with uh, shopping and uh, you know in, when she goes to the new class, found some uh, new clothes and all that she's tempted always so this particular lenten time he, she he, she told her husband darling i'm not going to be tempted this time i'm not going to buy any new frock i have enough okay come on i i believe in you darling when he when she came out of came in the evening with another beautiful frock few dollars come on darling what you said you said that you you you're not going to buy any new frocks this land then she said i saw this frock and i i i was tempted she could have told no get behind me satan i exactly told that then i took the frock behind me and it looked so nice <laughs> from behind that's why i bought it you know see peter said the lord said get behind me satan my dear friends this is the time this is the time where peter was appointed and it's important that that jesus that jesus knows the proper solid ground for that appointment pati poda dukra poda dukra poda dukra that's exactly why the lord is asking okay what people tell about me that's fine but who do you say that i am what is your relationship with me a religion is a relationship it's not a concept no a religion is a relationship all with jesus all to jesus you are my all you are my everything he is my everything he is my all the moment you lose that relationship you lose everything that's exactly why the lord had to build P peter take him through the mill to make him humble that ego will take you away from god that shebna should die in you that's exactly why the lord is saying to eliakim i will i will fasten him like a peg pete ara mama genna kiwa ekage ade metiya ga i will fasten you like a peg to fasten like a peg meka mehama allaga denna mallaga meden te this demonstration will will help you to remember fasten you like a peg you know of course it's a nail not a peg it causes a lot of pain causes a lot of pain to fix like a peg you know it's important that peter was formed okay pute peter had to go through terrible experiences in your calling in your calling initially it's very tasty in your marriage initially it is a lot of with lot of thrill and enthusiasm but the lord has to fix you fix you like a peg because the whole tent it's a shepherdic connotation the tent is fixed tied to the peg the whole tent depend on that particular peg if it is loosened the whole tent will collapse that's why that's why peter the papacy of paul our first pope is important my dear friends think about our calling of course not only peters we are we have to be proud that that we are catholics we only we have that pope we have that rock the lord is saying i will build my church i will build my church not peters church it's my church and not churches we have about 3 33000 and odd 
so called churches the but the lord speaks in the gospel about one church and i will give the keys of the kingdom to the particular person not an organization that person is peter and the lord is saying i will build my church on you it's a person it's not a teaching it's not a concept that person is peter simon your capus i'm going to build my church on you today pope francis is the 200 233rd pope 266th pope in that succession first pope is saint peter according to our tradition the second pope is linus 67 ad to 80 ad so we have that succession only catholics only catholics my dear friends of course the kingdom is bigger than church salvation is there in everywhere god's 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 grace is there there's no problem but one church one pope one rock we can't help but that's the truth according to the gospel so by the way that's anyway so so think about the the lord is saying i will build you i will build my church on you peter you are a rock kingdom is built on that rock as sri lankans my dear friends if you can think about a kingdom on a rock what can you think kingdom on a rock sri lankans they say it's the eight eight king kashyap and sigiriya king kashyap and sigiriya he was scared of mughalan that's another story but then he built that kingdom on the rock geographically they say even even sigiriya was a mountain with lot of soil so when that soil is washed away eroded the rock will remain the same after that erosion the rock would come out even peter the same he was so frail fragile weak broken wavering not stable at all that soil was eroded with formation and the rock god saw that rock in that pale peter in the same very same way my dear friends exactly who you are only known by him externally what others thought about me but my parents told me but i heard in my mother's womb all my brokenness is like a lot of soil covered that rock we don't know sometimes we are so we, are, we have condemned ourselves inferior inferior or complex we have looked down upon ourselves we have lowered up our, lowered ourselves but only god knows exactly who you are he saw that weak peter peter who always jumped the gun missed the point he saw that rock well ahead of time only he knows who you are the god who creates god who protects god who gives you name gives you meaning exactly knows who you are so let's find time to identify myself let's find time to find my the meaning of my marriage my children my vision my mission so go to that philippi caesarea and philippi go to that solitary ground climb that mountain to find the meaning of yourself and in that meaning of course it takes time for the completion it takes time for you to come to that climax but then bear with time trust in the word of the lord peter failed many times many a times he fell but god is always faithful though we are unfaithful peter rejected denied the lord three times yet god was faithful that's the same calling you have you and me we all have my dear friends 
Don't be discouraged. Don't be disheartened. That He knows exactly who you are. He know your. He knows your capacity. He knows the rock beneath yourself, beneath your weak self. Let Him take that rock. Let him take that saint within you. Let him take that real self within you. Because he has a dream for, for you. You are chosen with a meaning. You are called by the Lord, with, by your name. So the Lord has a plan for you. We are Catholics. Proud to be a Catholic. We have one rock, one church. And we are, we are that members of that church. Let's thank the Lord for this beautiful calling. Let's stay connected all the time. Let the Lord minister in yourself. Let the Lord protect you. Let the Lord, Lord take, that, take that soil away from you so that that rock can come out. And you know you will find your real self before the Lord. Amen.